Let's look at question 15 here. Where did you get these ideas? into that, it's good to get in the habit of trying to start with your chart. Where would we be in this chart on this problem? So first of all, are we on the converging side or the diverging side? We're on the uh, converging side. How do we know? Well, just because we've memorized that this is a converging mirror. We need to have memorized that this is what a converging mirror looks like. Now, exactly where are we? for this converging mirror. Where do we need to be? Remember, the main thing the question is asking us is, where should we put the object so the image is the same location as the object? First of all, what does it mean if the image is at the same location as the object? What, what else does that tell us if we know that the image is at the same location as the object? What, what else does that tell us about the image besides that i equals o, just in words? So this tells us that the image distance is the same as the object distance. What does that tell you about the magnification? That uh, the reason the magnification is the same size. Yeah, that was the idea I was getting at. This was the idea, remember, that the relationship between the image and the object sizes is the same as the relationship between the image and the object distances. Okay. Um, so when they tell you that the image is at the same location as the object, we also know that the image is the same size. And we know that it's upright. Uh, how do we know that? Uh, well, isn't, I'm sorry, we don't know that. Yeah, so let's just go through that together now. Um, so we know the image is the same size as the object, and we know we have a converging device. Well, where does that put us in our handout? Um, in our chart here. Uh, we can't be in this region, because here it would be magnified. We can't be here, because here it would be infinitely magnified. Here it's magnified. Here it's shrunk. What's the one point uh, for a converging device um, when we have the same size? as the image, wouldn't that be this point over here? We've seen that when the object is at twice the focal point, um, this, is when the, uh, image just, uh, this is when the image is the same size as the object. Okay, so um, we know right off the bat that the object must be at twice the focal point. So now we can answer a lot of questions not, uh, just based on our chart. So for example, the questions were things like, where should the object be placed? Well, it should be placed at twice the focal point. Okay. Um, is the image going to be real or virtual, based on our chart? It's going to be real image. Because we're here in the real area. Mm -hmm. uh, and is it going to be inverted or upright? Um, it's going to be inverted. Because we're here in the inverted area as well. And what's the magnification? It's one. 
And since it's inverted, we know the magnification will be negative one, to be even more precise. <coughs> okay, so this is a good example of how we can save a lot of time by using our chart. If we were going to work this out mathematically, since we know that the image is the same size as the object, again, we know that i has to equal o. So I could plug in an o over here. Now I'll give you this. If you take uh, the reciprocal of both sides, you get that f is o over 2, or o is at twice the focal point. This is how we can prove this. The reason I wanted to mention this is I don't know if you could get full credit from your instructor by just pointing to your chart. Sure. <laughs> now, this helps you to get the right answer, but you should also know how to show this mathematically. So this is how we could show this mathematically, that same side O equals 2F. And then you would do the magnification. Um, well, we just decided here that um, the image was going to be at the same location uh, as the object and we would get a magnification of negative one. And that's how we prove mathematically all these things that we just read off from the chart. Okay, so I wanted to include this because it is actually very common for them to ask you questions about these borderline cases where something is neither magnified nor shrunk, but it's the same size. And it helps to know ahead of time that we're at this point on the chart. Okay, and here's how we would work that out algebraically as well. Okay, so now we can go ahead and take a look at refraction and uh, Snell's law. Okay.